Today on Everyday Tactical Vids, we'll be talking about this, which is basically Essie's version of an Altoids tin survival kit. It's called the Mini Kit, and we're going to open it up, take a look at the contents, and see how helpful they would be in an outdoor survival situation. So Altoids survival tins are really nothing new. People have been making them and actually selling them for a long time. Let me show you a couple different options you have here when it comes to these small, maybe pocket-sized kits, as we might call them. So here's your standard Altoids tin. It is pretty much the exact same size as the SE kit right here. People also make these mini Altoids survival kits or survival tins. There's a smaller version. Here's a different size and style of Altoid survival tin. The advantage for all these is that they're metal, so they're going to be a little bit more durable than just having it in a baggie or something like that. Over here you can see an OtterBox, and I actually have an OtterBox survival kit uh, that I made that was built around a waterproof concept, and I'll put a link down below if you want to check that out uh, later on. And then over here, I think this is just like a container that I got some outdoor gear in, but it's clear, it's got a little clip on the side there. It does have a, um, a gasket, so it should be relatively waterproof or at least water resistant. So bottom line, lots of different ways that you can put these types of kits together. The question is, are they actually useful and what are you putting in them so they can actually be helpful and useful to you? So let's get rid of all these other things and dig into this SE kit to see what's inside. As we start off here, I just wanna be clear that I have never opened up this tin. I've never looked online to see what um, gear is in these uh, SE survival tins or the mini kits as they're officially called, I guess. Um, I wanted to do this on camera so you could see you know, what's in it and we could kind of have the experience at the same time without me doing the background research. This was given to me uh, by some friends. So yeah, this is the first time I'm opening it up. You can see there's a little piece of this round tape here. Some people, when they make these kits for themselves, will put uh, electrical tape around there um, or maybe a ranger band even to make it a little bit more water resistant or waterproof. That's what the bottom of the box looks like. So there's that. So let's open it up and see what's inside here. All right, so you open it up, you can see we do have this reflective portion here, so you could certainly use that for signaling if you can get some light to uh, bounce off that. Obviously the sun is the main thing we're thinking about. Do have some wire right here, and I'll open this up and measure it in a minute. Looks like pretty solid stuff. Uh, snares, repairing things, you could certainly use, use that. Um, got some quick tenders, looks like four of these. If you're not familiar with these, what you can do is fluff these up and then hit it with a, uh, hit it with a spark, and that'll actually uh, you know, get your fire ready to rock and roll. They are, um, when you fluff them up, they're very uh, capable of catching a spark and they're also kind of impregnated with some sort of chemical or something that will allow it to um, catch a spark really easily. So there's that. Let's see what else in this little 3M container. So this is a bright strike light. When you press this, you can see it flashes, flashes more slowly, steady on, and then off. That's a tiny little, uh, tiny little light there. What else do we have in here? So this looks like, yeah, this is some basic cordage, and you can also use these little, uh, you know, these little plastic bags for something. Not a, t they don't have to serve a ton of use because they're not that big, but you could certainly um, put things, you know, put things inside them if you wanted to. So we've got some, um, we've got some cordage here, and it is probably half the size of your standard paracord looks like. And again, I'll measure this to see how long that is. Put that over there. Got a little button compass. And always good to test these out, kind of flip them around, move them around and see if they will reorient themselves. So it's saying north is that way. I spin it around a little bit, or disorient it, and then see if it'll do that again. Yep, so sometimes these button compasses just aren't great, but I'm not surprised. Essie would give you a good one. So there's a little button compass. Put that right here for now. And we have in here, looks like a basic fishing kit. So we'll put this on the side for now, and then we'll unbag that in a minute. And then we have a ferro rod and a striker, and they are connected, so that's good. Sometimes you, you, know, you have the ferro rod and then you lose the striker. So that's that, and then let's see, what do we have back here? So this is one of those, um, yeah, it's just a single. Sometimes you can get it with both a razor, uh, razor blade and then also a little folding hacksaw. This has just a razor blade edge, so you can cut things. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot of um, you know, woodworking with this. This is like, so say you catch a fish and you gotta cut it open to gut it. You could certainly use this for that purpose dermasafe.com that's who makes that let's close that up so i don't hurt myself 
So there's, that's that. Uh, sometimes you can get these and they actually have little hash marks for a tiny little ruler. Uh, you know, in, uh, got in inches and in centimeters, millimeters on the other side. So not on this one, but. And then here looks like we have a signaling mirror in this little plastic bag and it gives you some instructions there. And we'll go into detail on all these in a minute just so you can actually see what they look like. Uh, so compact emergency signal mirror with the hole in the middle. And then on the bottom, let's see if this will come out pretty easily. On the bottom of the tin, we've got one of their uh, survival cards. They give these out at SHOT Show. Um, they're, they are made of a, a pretty durable plastic that's not going to break on you in two seconds. I don't want to bend it too much, but um, short-term survival tips here on the back. does give you ground, um, ground to air distress signal so you can signal. Um, looks like you got millimeters, inches over there. Tells you some distances and then using survival there's an acronym there to basically say here's how to keep your head in the game when you're actually uh you know you're out in a survival situation so that's everything in the kit and then uh it is does have that nice shiny bottom there as well so you can use that to signal use that to signal but you already have a mirror so um yeah so that's everything in the kit let's look at this stuff in a little bit more detail now I want to go into detail on some of the items in this kit, but these four right here, it's kind of like what you see is what you get. They're, they're basic. They do their job. The card has information on it. The compass does work. It's very small, obviously. Uh, the razor blade from dermasafe.com is going to be like any other razor blade. It does give you a little bit more stability because you're not holding it in your hands. You've got this little kind of handle. And then the SE tin, you know, to carry your items in and to, you know, put some other, other items in if you wanted to. I already mentioned you could use the inside of this as a, a signaling device, but we do have a mirror uh, as well in the kit. So these four, you kind of right in front of you, that's what, that's what they are, that's what they do. Let's go into a little bit more detail on some of the other items now. Here's a look at the quick tinder. Uh, this is one of the tabs before it's fluffed up, and that's what it looks like fluffed up. I find if you kind of break it up like this and fluff it to that degree, it's going to catch a spark just fine, and it'll burn for a little bit. So it's not like if you hit a, uh, a bunch of jute twine, that's going to go up really quickly. This will burn for a little bit so you can get your fire going. Next up here we have this bright strike light. And um, the one thing I'll mention is that there's a 3M sticker on the back. Basically, you peel this off, and now you can attach this to a pack, a tree, something that you want to basically get somebody's attention with or however you want to use it. This is not really made, it uh, doesn't look like, to be taken out of the container, though I guess you could if you cut it with the, uh, with the razor. But um, yeah, so you've got this sticky back if you want to attach it to something like a hat or a pack or something like that. Just be careful while 3M is good as far as um, the degree to which it, the adhesive actually functions well. If you're out in a very humid situation, it may just, you know, you stick it on something and then it falls off. So I would definitely um, keep this around and I probably wouldn't be using the sticker a ton uh, unless I got to a place where I was absolutely sure that I wouldn't, you know, attach it to something and then have it fall off in a little bit. Here's your ferro rod and your striker. And just to show you that it does work, it will throw a spark. I generally find the cords for these things are just too short. So uh, it's good to keep them together. But if I really want to get a fire going off and detach them, you know, start the fire by striking the ferro rod and then put the, uh, the, the striker and the uh, ferro rod back together with the cordage. But just to show you that it does work. So that is a functional fire steel. Next up here we have this cordage and just to show you how much uh, actual cordage you're getting. So this is obviously 12 inches. So that's one foot, two feet, three feet, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if it's 10 feet. Looks like it's a little bit more than 10 feet, 10. And then it looks like it's probably about 11 feet, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, but about 11 feet of cordage right there. It isn't 550 cord, but I like the concept of a smaller, uh, a smaller diameter cordage just because you probably don't need super strong cordage in a survival situation. And now by taking up less space with 550 cord, you can actually keep more cordage in the kit. Next up, we've got this signal mirror. There's some instructions on the back. Um, it's two inches by an inch and a half, and then flip it over and that's what it looks like. So signaling obviously is a huge deal when you're trying to get somebody's attention in a rescue situation. So you're basically going to, uh, you know, you hold hold this up, look through that, and you're gonna set up your fingers to kind of be the, the front sight. And then you're gonna um, shoot the reflection of the sunlight at whatever target you're trying to hit so you can get that person's or those people's attention. So I have loosened up the uh, snare wire. Let's just see how much of that we're getting here. 
and it doesn't give me any information on like the uh, you know what test line this is but uh, so that's one foot this might take a little bit more time to do we'll say two three got a little knot in there let's see here four five six seven eight nine oh got a knot in mine now I gotta untwist this ten eleven Looks like a ballpark of about 12 feet of this uh, snare wire. We'll look at the line in one second and actually measure how much line they give you. Uh, but here's a look at the other gear. So you get three different pairs of hooks, all different sizes. So from a large to medium to small. Great that they give you six hooks because, you know, not that I've ever lost a lure or hook, but I've had friends who've lost it. Okay, all seriousness, you know, if you've been fishing at all, you've definitely lost lures, hooks, things like that. So great to have some backups. You got some uh, little uh, lead weights there, lead um, sinkers, so you know you can get a little deeper in the water if you need to. And then these uh, these little fishing um, jigs I find are great for um, panfish in general. So I've caught sunfish on these, um, crappie, perch, things like that. So there's no guarantee that because you have water and a fishing kit you're going to catch fish, but I feel like this gives you a pretty good fighting chance um, in a survival situation with what you have here. We're going to measure the fishing line now, but since it looks like there's quite a bit, I'm going to do this in time-lapse photography, and uh, we'll see how much total uh, fishing line we're getting in this kit. There you have it. All the items that come in this SE Survival Tin. Your price point for this is going to be, looks like, $34 on Amazon at the time of this video. Um, let me offer a couple of thoughts. Now, I want to offer five changes I would make to this kit. Let me first start off by saying I've interacted with SE a variety of times. I haven't gone into any, any of their trainings, but... Having dug around, they seem to know their stuff. So my thoughts are merely thoughts. I'm not trying to say I'm the expert out there. Uh, SC, if you're watching this, maybe they're helpful to you and you can make changes. I've spent a lot of time in the woods and the things that I have found most helpful, a lot of them are in this tin. I'm gonna add a couple extra or swap out some things because I think there's you know some additions that could help it be at least more helpful for me where I'm located in the Northeast. The first two changes I would make would be to add a plastic bag for water and water purification tabs. Um, that's a huge deal in the woods. I've experienced dehydration in a variety of settings and it's just no fun. So to have a way to collect water and then to purify it would be a big win for me. So those would be the first two. Uh, the third one is I would um, take out that mirror and instead replace it with an extra razor blade or two and just tape them on the underside of the tin cover because you can use the inside of the tin you know, to reflect as a signaling device. So I just don't think the mirror is that uh, necessary. So that's three. Uh, number four would be, I would add maybe a couple small bobbers or maybe a couple extra of those rubber, those little rubber um, jigs. They, they can break, they can fall off. They're very small, They're, you can smush them down and then you just have you know, more options for your, uh, for your fishing kit. Small bobber, I mean, super small bobbers are not very helpful because they just sink because of the weight of the hook and your bait and whatever. But if you can fit a small bobber in there, I think that could be a nice addition as well. The last change I would make to this kit would be redundancy with fire starting. So you've got the ferro rod, you've got the tinder to get that started, but you know if you have a really bad situation where the weather's terrible, I want a lot of options to get fire started. So for me in the woods, water and fire really become those top two priorities once it comes to you know being out there for a while and you know dehydration just starts to kick my butt and then I'm cold at night. I, even if I'm cold during the day, I need to warm up after I fell into a lake or something like that. So I would like some other options, maybe some waterproof matches, maybe some of those fireproof matches that I believe Yuko makes. Uh, whatever it is, another option to start fire would be uh, an addition or something I would you know swap those in to swap something out. Even if it took up a little bit more space, that for me is some peace of mind to know I've got another chance and another opportunity to make fire. Once again, we've been looking at this SE Survival Tin. Now let's hear from you. In the comment section down below, tell us what you think as far as do you like the kit? What changes would you make? Do you have your own Altoid Survival Tin? I will tell you that this has challenged me to think about, you know, when I build an Altoid Survival Tin, um, what do I really want to put in it? Um, I can 
tell you a couple extra things that maybe they wouldn't find helpful, but based on my kind of everyday carry needs, I would uh, I would put in. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to have using this kit as kind of a base for my thinking to jump off into making my own Altoids tin. Stay tuned for a, uh, a future video on that. If you have a uh, Altoids tin that you've made, if you can send me pictures, you can send me links to the video, but comment down below so people can see what you're doing in your survival tins like this. Thanks as always for checking out the videos here on Everyday Tactical Vids. I wanna ask you to not only subscribe, but if you click that little bell and you can see it in your mobile setting or also on your computer, that'll give you a little heads up when a new video comes out from Everyday Tactical Vids. So not only are you subscribed, but you're getting notifications as well. Also wanna remind you we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. More videos are coming soon. We've got some reviews and we also have some more instructional teaching and training videos as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Take care.